Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Underwater Photography Show. Uh, today, we are going to talk about Sony lenses. Uh, I am Matthew Sullivan. Oh, and I'm Alex Mustard. Um, so essentially how we're going to do this is almost like you're picking teams in the schoolyard. Uh, so we're going to go from our first choices down to scraping the bottom of the barrel. Um, and taking but, it in turns. So yeah, yeah so but it's 1635. That's the, that's the guy that can't kick a ball straight. <laughs> um, but anyway, Alex, go ahead. You may start. You may pick. Oh, first. thank you. Well, that's great. It's always good <laughs> to get good first choice. So I'm going to not only have first choice, but I'm going to take the cheating option. <laughs> and that is to go for the Sony 28 to 60. Small, relatively even, cheaply priced, nice little sharp lens. Doesn't seem ideal for underwater photography, except for the fact, of course, that it mates so perfectly with um, Nauticam's wet optics, which can be easily adapted to pretty much any housing out there. So it's not just a Nauticam photographer's choice. And the 2860, when combined with two different lenses, both the forthcoming FCP lens, which is the fisheye conversion port that takes that 28 mil and turns it into a full fisheye. And then when you zoom in, it zooms in and it loses a lot of that fisheye um, stretch and becomes really quite a tight, small lens is one option you could use it with. And then the other option is to use it with either one of the WWL series of lenses or the WACP series of lenses. The WWLs are the removable lenses underwater. The WACPs are the ones that are actual ports, but they both turn that 28 mil into a 130 degree lens. And basically, Naughty Cam prices them for how good they are optically and how heavy they are. Their, their pricing isn't related to the weight, but the, the <laughs> weight gives the optical quality. And the more optical quality, the more expensive glass that's in there, the more expensive they are. But they're all generally giving the same angle of view. I have a couple of those. I use the WACP one when for me it's kind of, you know, weight is no issue and I'll just go for the, the heaviest, best lens I can. And so WACP one is the one I go for. If I'm a bit tighter for weight on the trip and that zoom range isn't that important to me, then I go WWL and I have a WWL 1B for that. Um, and with a 28 to 60, with an FCP, I'm kind of doing... 175 degrees, you know, so really super wide fisheye down to something I reckon it's about 80 to 90 degrees in terms of field of view. But because the front element is small, you can actually really fill the frame as long as you can get close to a subject with really small subjects with it. With the WACP, it's a 130 degree lens, and that goes down to probably something around 60 to 70 degrees field of view. So there's quite a bit of overlap between the two, but with the 28 to 860, I'm definitely going to win this match. So your <laughs> choice. <laughs> All right. Well, if you took that one, I'm taking the top macro lens, uh, which uh, is the Sony 90. Uh, there are some other longer, longer options like the Sigma 105, um, but the Sony 90 is where it's at. Uh, it's a, especially on the newer bodies, it's very, very fast uh, in terms of autofocusing. It's accurate. I'm not even using one of the one of the newest bodies, and it's still really good. It's um, a really sharp lens, yeah. Yes, and it and is I think very, that, very sharp. That's a really important point that you make there, is that the experience of that lens is so different for mm -hmm. people, um, depending on what camera body. I mean, I in the early days of Sony, I'd always hear people moaning about the 90mm being a poor focusing lens. It didn't match up to other macro lenses out there. And my experience of it has always been on, you know, on newer high end Sony bodies and it's incredible. And yeah. I'm just like, you know, and it's, it's the same lens, but performs so differently on the different bodies. Sorry to interject. No, no. And I even used it on the a seven R three, which is not an especially new body. And even on that, I thought it was more than adequate. That's the setup I shot on my one trip to Lembe. Uh, and it was, it worked perfectly well on that. The only thing I did notice on some of those older bodies is it would front focus a tiny bit. Um, and I don't know if that was something I was doing wrong because that was the first time I'd used that lens or if that's just the tendency it had. Um, but using it on, on my A9 now, which I've been using it for for you know a couple months, it's lightning quick. It doesn't have any of those issues. Uh, and like you said, it is very, very sharp. Um, the Sigma 105 is also supposed to be very good optically but noticeably slower, especially on a lot of the newer bodies. So if you shoot things that aren't completely static, uh, that might not be the best choice. Um, so this, the 90 is probably the best all around macro choice you can have 
uh, for Sony full frame at this point. And, and in reality, those two are occupying a very similar field of view range. It's, it's really, you're really not going to have both, you know, even if you're a money, no object kind of person, it's, they're really just such an overlap. And if you're choosing between the two, it's a, it's a 90, damn it. Um, I'm going to, as you know, and I know you're pretty similar to me in this regard, I love fisheye lenses. I just, the wider the view, the lens, the more impressive your photo in underwater photography. And I love fisheyes. And much as I adore the FCP because of its huge flexibility, something it can't do is split levels. And there are also quite a lot of places you go where you know for the whole dive, you're just going to shoot full fisheye. It's an amazing scenic dive. I don't need a lens that zooms in. And so I definitely want a fisheye on my Sony lens camera. And not my camera, but as a recommendation, the top of the line choice for me is a Canon 8 to 15 mil fisheye. It's a super sharp, really good fisheye on a, on a Metabones adapter, which I think the latest Metabones is the best adapter. And I think that's the ultimate fisheye choice for Sony. But there are a few other options. Um, the next option is the um, Nikon 8 to 15 mil on a monster adapter. That's another excellent lens and that lens is really sharp. And that's actually what I use because I, I came from a Nikon camera to Sony. And I'm super happy with how that performs optically. But the monster adapter is a little bit more clunky than the, the Metabones one. It's kind of just feels a few generations older. And while it works, it's got a few rough edges. So I'd, I'd recommend to anyone starting from scratch, definitely go the Canon route. A cheaper option, which I think particularly these days with things like FCPs about, you might want to say, well, I'm probably not going to use the prime fisheye that much. I'm going to be using the FCP all the time. So I could maybe save a bit of money here. And you could go down the, the Sigma 15 mil um, route. You, need to, you, you can find these lenses really well, really low priced on secondhand play, um, sites um, because you know they, they've been around for a long time. But you need to get a Canon fit one. If you get a Nikon fit Sigma 15 mil, it won't work on the adapter. Even the monster adapter won't work on it. But the Canon fit Sigma made 15 mil fisheye, you can find them really cheaply and use that on either a Sigma um, is MC2 adapter or the Metabones adapter. Both of those work really well with that lens. The one I'm skirting around in this choice is um, a, a, a lens that we've made another video about and that's the Nikonos RS 13mm autofocus fisheye. And I'm not going to mention that here because it isn't widely available. And we have also made uh, very recently a, a whole video about it. And, and Matt's actually been shooting that. One of the only people to have shot that on a Sony, um, or one of only two, I think, um, during the last year anyway. So we've got a whole video to say about that. On those fisheyes, um, just a quick thing on domes. Most of those fisheyes work pretty well with small domes. I would personally avoid the smallest domes with them. I think you give too much away on image quality. If you're buying a full frame Sony camera, don't compromise your image quality by thinking you can get away by using the smallest dome ports with those fisheyes. They will work. You know, they will take pictures behind a four inch, a hundred mil dome. But for me, I would, the smallest I would go with them to get reasonable image quality is a 140 mil, six inch dome sort of range. I think that's a good compromise size between being not too big and still giving good image quality. But I generally shoot mine actually behind the bigger dome because the reason I'm taking that bigger dome on a trip with me is to have the ability to do splits. So the reason I, you know, I'm using a fisheye prime is also to have that capability. So I typically use the 230 mil dome. And actually mine are, you know, are from the Nikon cameras and they just use the same ones. You know, the good thing about domes is once you've invested in them, they can travel with you through through different systems. OK, that's my second choice. So I'm I'm, I'm all about the wide stuff. <laughs> all right. So I guess I'm doing all the macro stuff today because uh, my next choice would be uh, I would probably go with the Canon 60 mil macro. Um, it actually does cover the full frame sensor on Sony. And this uh, is the. Is this the is this the six this is the sixty mil from the EOS so it's a it's an S it's an it, but it's an but it was the one that was for crop sensor EOSs right. so it's, I think it's EFS sixty yeah so it actually unless you're shooting it at f two point eight where you'll get a little bit of vignetting it will cover the full frame sensor on the Sony cameras um, it's much faster than the Sony fifty mil the native lens even with 
whatever adapter you're using. I would recommend, like you said, the Metabones. Um, I think a snail is much faster than, <laughs> than, than the 50 mil. Um, and it's very, very sharp. Uh, I was never really impressed with that lens on Canon DSLR. I did own it a long time ago, and it was eh. Um, but it is significantly better on the Sony mirrorless cameras, both in terms of speed and in terms of image quality. Um, you have some other options. There's also Sigma, like the Sigma 70, I think, comes in, might come in an FE mount, but it's all supposed to be, like you said, tectonic plate slow. Um, yeah, and I'm not sure it's as slow as the 50 mil, but like the 50 mil, it also extends, uh, which does make it difficult to optimize your port around. Um, so the Canon 60 doesn't have any of those problems. It's very small. You can find them used for a couple hundred bucks, um, and it will work flawless i mean i've been i used it on um a friend's a7r2 it worked really really well i've tried it on my a9 worked really well so i'm assuming all of the newer generation um sony's it'll be even better um but that would be my my second choice for for picking teams and i, I think it's a, a really important point in underwater photography is that as underwater photographers we need multiple macro lenses a land photographer just has one macro lens and they can just be further away or closer to the subject because we need to work close to our subjects we we don't you know it really benefits us to have multiple macro lens focal lengths yeah. in that range i've also used because it's i guess a, a hand-me-down from my nikon slrs the nikon 60 mil macro lens which mm. is a really nice lens it's a bit chromatic aberration-y but apart from that it's a really really nice macro lens and I'm using that on the Monster Adapter. And I would say that, well, the fisheye lens on the Monster Adapter, the Nikon fisheye, is really nice to use. It's just a little bit rough around the edges. The roughness around the edges comes out a little bit more with the Nikon 60 mil. So if you have a 60 mil Nikon and you have a Monster Adapter, why not use it? But it's not a great solution for everything. Um, so, but my hope is I'm definitely hanging on to it in the hope that, you know, the monster adapters or other adapters will come on the market, which are just improved and actually it will become nicer and nicer to use. And it's it's not a problem to shoot. It's just you definitely notice the drop off in performance that using an adapted lens is giving you. It's just, you know, just got a few rough edges. No need to go into the detail on that. But I, I do like that lens. I've shot some nice shots with it underwater. But yeah, I, I think that that sound, I the Metabones is just a more developed system and i think it, it means that when you're adapting lenses with it you get a better end result so i think it's my choice next and we're getting into the tricky area now <laughs> um, um this is gonna have to take a bit of thinking i think actually i think i would probably go i think i guess probably it's, it's why we aren't going for what i think a lot of people would say is the next obvious choice and that's the wide rectilinear lens and the reason i'm not going for that choice is i i first of all can cover that whole field of view range with a WWL or WACP. And I'll get it with, in my mind, I, I, I'm i convinced they're much better quality. I mean, you know, I wouldn't use them if they weren't. I have a bigger zoom range than I have with, with, with the, the wide rectilinear lenses like a 1635. I can, you know, shoot wider with the WWL and tighter on the same dive with a smaller front element so I can shoot smaller subjects. It's... You know, it's, it's just win in every area. Um, I think it's sharper and it's got better colors as well. So for me, it's the way to go. People do say, well, you know, I sometimes want to keep everything completely straight in terms of lines. And maybe for a few things like stalactites inside a cave or the inside of a wreck, I maybe want a rectilinear. But I don't even have one in my system. So I'm begrudgingly going to choose the Tamron 17 to 35. A um, friend of mine, uh, Massimo, who's, you know, very active, testing stuff a lot on forums and things. He's a big fan of that lens. He also owns an expensive Sony 1635, which covers the same range for land photography. And he's back-to-back -back tested them. And he says, well, I paid, I think, four times as much for my Sony lens. And when I shoot landscapes on land, I see the difference. And when I put them behind a dome port and use them underwater, I see no difference. So I'm not used to using those lenses, but I'm going to pass on his advice which is, you know, if you're buying from scratch, the Tamron 17 to 35 is a better choice than that 1635. Just from a performance for money point of view, it's it's a massive advantage over the Sony lens. If you have the Sony lens because you like to use it on land, then by all means put it underwater. But for me, 
for underwater use, I'd choose a WWL on the 28 to 60. So I've begrudgingly chosen a wide rectilinear, but in all honesty to, to the listeners, I don't have one for my own photography because I'm not interested. Uh, one thing I want to comment on with that is, is people think about those kit lenses that are being used behind the water contact optics. And like, why would I bother using a mediocre lens behind the water contacts when there's like the $2,000 16 to 35. Um, but again, if you're putting them behind water's a great equalizer. So if you're putting a lens behind water, it's going to, a lot of those advantages that you'll have on land aren't going to be there underwater. And if you're using the cheaper lens behind the water contact optic, you will have better overall image quality than that more expensive lens behind a normal dome. Yeah. Yeah. You lose far more with the dome than you gained with the lens in the first place. Actually, the kit lens like the 2860, it's a sharp lens. It's not a, a poor lens in any, no, no. any measure. Yeah. And what those water contact lenses do is they transform what's being presented to that lens. Um, yeah. Whereas a dome port, you can take pictures through it, but you are throwing away a lot of image quality by using it, yeah. um, even that's the best solution. I guess there's a couple of others we, we might want to mop up with. I don't know if you've got any others you want to mention. Um, I mean, there's some you could we could really, really scrape the bottom of the barrel with. There's the Sony 28 millimeter prime, uh, which works behind all of those same water contact optics. Uh, it's nice. Ah, sorry. Nice. Nice. <laughs> nice. <doesn't> agree. Okay. <laughs> um, the, uh, it is, it's sharp, but you obviously lose the flexibility that you have with the 28 to 60. Um, and that's not optically that much better than the 28 to 60 to be worth it. In my opinion, I, I've um, shot it a bit um, just for the for the interest factor of it, using it behind those lenses. I've I've maybe convinced myself I can see a small difference, but not really a great deal of difference. Yeah. Um, another lens that I sort of you know to, I'd I'd maybe mention is the twenty to seventy mil relatively new Sony lens. Um, that's quite a popular lens because a lot of people have it as kind of a walk around lens, a high quality walk around lens for land. It's a good all-purpose travel lens, and you can use it underwater behind a dome port. I think that a, its usefulness underwater has been a bit overblown. It is neither a wide-angle lens or a macro lens. It's allowing you to cover a mid-range range of subjects, but ultimately it's going to take pretty mediocre underwater photos. Underwater photography is all about having those right lenses for underwater shooting. And that mid-range zone is not really where amazing underwater pictures take. You'll basically end up with worse wide-angle shots and worse macro shots than using those dedicated lenses. Um, another one on my list here, I'm just looking, is the um, the TT Artisan 100 lens. Um, the TT Artisan is a manual lens, so you need to use it with manual focus. Um, and it also requires you, if you're going to focus it underwater, for you to get a custom gear made for it. But it's it's basically a new version of the Tria Plan 100 lens that some of you may have heard of. It's a macro slash portrait lens. Um, and what photographers are attracted to it for is it renders really interesting bokeh. That's the out of focus elements in the picture. And it creates really abstract, very attractive bokeh in shots and gives you really interesting creative shots. And the TRIA plan is often very overpriced because there's a limited supply. And the TT Artisan is very attractively priced and is, from what I've seen, just as good in every department. So that's, that's a little recommendation of mine. Uh, that's my list run out. So if there's any others, it's, it's down to wish list time. What do you yeah. wish was in the, in the offing? Uh, so the biggest thing I, I would like to see Sony come out with specifically for underwater would be their own, uh, maybe like a, one of the G series or GM series, uh, ma shorter focal length macro lenses. So if they could do a 60 mil or a 70 mil G or GM that is not super slow and performs like the Sony 90, that would be fantastic. Um, not having to use adapters or, or, you know, other brand lenses would be really nice especially if they have, you know, the glass quality from some of those higher end Sony lenses, it would be really, really nice to shoot something like that um, for bigger I, stuff like frogfish and things like that. I don't know anyone at Sony um, well, but I've spoken to their reps at shows and they're usually pretty, you know, chatty and forthcoming. 
And I, you know, and I know how to ask the questions in a way that will get the sort of answers that are like, I can't tell you specifics, but you might want to, you know, wait for something. Yeah. And I've asked both Sony and Sigma about fish eyes and I've really heard nothing back. Like they're like, no, I don't think so. We're not going to, we're not really interested in doing that. Mm -hmm. So I think waiting for a native fish eye is probably not happening anytime soon. I'd love to be proved wrong. I've asked Sigma and Sony about macro lenses and Sony didn't give a big yes or no on that. So maybe they've got something coming in the macro lens. Sigma did give quite an encouraging answer to that question. And they were very much of the, you know, they seemed to be very encouraging that they would have some macro lenses to fit some of the cameras coming out. And I'm more interested in a macro lens that's longer than the 90 mil. Mm. So I'd love like a 120 or a 150. I used to use a Sigma 150 a lot on the SLRs. And I think something in 120 range would be a lovely step up from the 90 for when you just want to go a little bit more super in your macro. Yeah. Um, and I'd also quite like a third party teleconverter that work with the macro lenses because the, the Sony teleconverters don't work on the macro lenses. So you, mm. one thing I used to like doing as a Nikon photographer was I'd travel with my 105 mil macro and I'd take a 1.4 teleconverter to use with it to give me a longer macro lens on a trip. Um, and I'd love to sort of be able to put like a 1.4 on the, the Sony 90 and still have really good image quality, really good autofocus. So uh, a 1.4 that worked on the 90 would be another wish list of mine. A, a longer macro lens would be really nice too. Like a, like Nikki said, 120 to 150. Um, I like those especially, I like those for top side too, but yeah, using them underwater for certain subjects. I don't do a lot of super macro, but for skittish things like jawfish or pike bunnies yeah, or things, exactly, yeah. it'd be really nice to, to have something like that. Cause I used them, I, the Olympus 60 is the 120 millimeter equivalent. Yeah. And I find that really useful for a lot of those more skittish, uh, skittish macro subjects. Yeah, I think that 120, if you've got a 90, you know, a 60, a 90, a 120, that would be a lovely range. 150 yeah. is just beginning for me to get a bit long. It's usable, but yeah, 120 is really good. It looks to me like you're nearly ready for your walk. <laughs> um, so I think we should begin to wrap this one up. So thanks everyone for watching. Um, we'll see you next time on the Underwater Photography Show.